Okay, so this is a joint work with um, Lauren Bertoldi, um, Maya, who was an undergrad at Caltech, my advisor, Omer, and Leah, who's now at Princeton. Um, okay, so the, the background for this talk is, uh, is um, that, you know, in general, we don't have a good formula for um, aggregating social preferences. Um, but at least with, with two alternatives, we're not, uh, we're not totally out of luck. Um, but, but May's theorem tells us that um, if we impose a couple of uh, reasonable assumptions on, um, on what our voting rule, uh, on sort of what properties we want our voting rule to have, um, then, uh, then majority rule is, is the only one. Um, so these assumptions, um, so neutrality means that uh, that the um, we don't really care about the names of the candidates. Uh, positive responsiveness means that uh, if somebody expresses, if we're in a, in a sort of tie situation and somebody expresses a little a little more preference for one of the alternatives than before, sort of changes their preference in some direction, then the outcome should change in that direction. And then anonymity says that the um, is supposed to capture the fact that uh, that nobody that everybody plays the same the same role basically in in the voting role that we can really rearrange people however we want to um, and and um, so no, nobody's special basically um, uh, at least we, we feel like that was what um, the point of anonymity was and uh, and um, what I'm going to talk about is is uh, the fact that we don't really like that for example electoral colleges um, don't don't manage to fit this uh, um, this definition that this fails anonymity, um, but but doesn't seem to give anybody extra power over anyone else. Um, so we're going to suggest that anonymity is too strong and replace it with uh, a new notion that we call equitability. Um, and in doing so, we'll we'll introduce some uh, like like the electoral colleges and natural families of of rules that um, get thrown out by uh, anonymity, and um, and then we'll apply some some results and ideas from group theory uh, to to see what happens when you replace anonymity with equitability. Um, so our setup is is fairly standard. We have just two alternatives, um, minus one and one, and then uh, voters can be indifferent also. So that's what the zero is there, um, and so uh, a profile is just a preference over the two alternatives for. Uh, for every voter, and uh, voting rule will take a voting profile and um, and spit out um, and uh, sort of an aggregated preference. So it might it might say you know it might spit out indifference. Um, doesn't actually have to choose one of the candidates. Um, okay, so I I quickly mentioned these before. Um, but just formally, so neutrality um, it says that we don't we don't care about the the names, the minus one and the one. We could flip them around, um, and and the outcome should be flipped. Um, positive responsiveness. Um, the 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 only import this is a lot to take in, but the only important part is um, is that if we're in a again in a tie situation, and um, and somebody changes their preference. Uh, uh, towards one, say, then then instead of the outcome being indifference between the two alternatives, the outcome should now be uh, that one wins. And um, a rule is anonymous if whenever we, uh, if we can swap the votes of any two voters and, and that doesn't change the outcome at all. Um, any questions about these? Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at automorphisms of, of, of voting rules. Um, formally, this is, I mean, I think what, what you would guess it is, um, but we'll look at a picture because I think that's more digestible. Um, so here is the, the same picture from before. Um, and now we're going to move people around. So notice that we, we kept one, two, and three together. We kept four, five, and six together. And we kept seven, eight, and nine together. And we just wrote them in, in a different order. Um, and the, the votes that they're casting in this picture are the same as the votes that they were casting in the previous picture. Um, and, uh, and the outcome is the, the same. Um, so yeah, so by the way, we're taking, uh, we're taking majority and then, and then again, uh, majority. That's to explain this picture better. Um, 
but it, yeah, so so in general, in automorphism, you should think of as a, as a symmetry of a voting rule. It's a way of just permuting the voters that um, that doesn't change the outcome as long as everyone votes the same way. Um, any any questions about that? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Um, and and this seems very strong, actually, when you when you put it this way. Uh, it seems like whatever you're trying to get at with anonymity, um, you, you you sort of went too far um, if you ask for every single permutation to be an automorphism of the of the voting rule. Um, so what what we really think. Um, should be the right notion is equitability, and this says that for for any any two voters, there should be an automorphism that sends one voter to the other voter, um, and this is intended to capture the idea that that um, nobody's playing a special role. Everybody's really playing sort of the same role in the in the voting rule. Does that does that make sense? Okay, um, so for for people who uh, yeah regularly deal with group actions, this just says it's transitive. Um, Okay, so here's an example of a of a pretty wild voting rule. Um, so uh, if all the people who are colored blue uh, vote the same way, so let's say they all vote for one, then the outcome will be one. Or if they all vote for minus one, then the outcome will be minus one. Um, if they're if they're all indifferent, that's that's we don't that doesn't mean that the outcome is indifference. But um, okay. Uh, also, uh, so this the top the top left picture is the same picture I had up before, and then the next picture is rotated by one and then rotated by two, and uh, I'm not going to write all the rotations, but but I, I want you to imagine that I had written all the rotations. So, um, if uh, if any of the people arranged uh, as these uh, in this blue arrangement all vote for one, then the outcome will be one. Uh, if they all vote for minus one, the outcome will be minus one. If that doesn't happen, um, then we'll just take majority rule. Okay, so there's a there's a voting rule, and it's um, and it's equitable. Uh, so hopefully it's it's pretty obvious that we've cooked it up so that it'll be uh, you know rotationally symmetric. Um, any questions about that? Is it clear what the is it totally unclear what the rule is? Okay, so uh, another example um, is uh, is you can imagine that you, you arrange people in a grid, and um, as long as there's uh, you can find uh, one column and one row where all people vote for one, then then the outcome is one, um, and same thing for minus one. But but if you can't, then you take majority rule. Okay, so um, so here again you get these kinds of like pretty reasonable. Um, Kinds of voting rules that that really can't show up uh, uh, when when your voting rule has to be anonymous. Um, okay, so so I did in 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 both of these cases, I I really focused on these sort of very particular sets, and I said if they all uh, if they all agree on what the outcome should be, then that's going to be the outcome, and otherwise we take majority rule. Um, so in in general, if you have a set where if they all agree, then then that's uh, that's what we do. We'll call that a, a winning coalition, S standard terminology, um, and um, a sort of stupid corollary of May's theorem is is that um, if you have one of these sort of reasonable rules, then then every um, every winning coalition has to be at least half of the people. Um, so what happens when you replace anonymity with equitability is is that half goes to root n instead. <laughs> Um, which is which is pretty cool. So I'll run through a quick proof of that. I'm, yeah, I'm a little scared of the of doing this, uh, but okay. So um, suppose that we have a, a, a voting rule and, and W is a winning coalition for that rule. Um, then then the, the most important thing is that uh, is that if I if I act by any automorphism of the voting rule, then then my my new thing is supposed to be a winning coalition also. So it needs to intersect with with W. Because if it didn't, then I could have two winning coalitions that disagree, um, and that's that's kind of the the important feature. Yeah, does that is that believable? Yeah. What is your perspective in step twenty four? What is the parameters for the only step that is 
Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the particular blue positions that I that I drew. Yeah, no, no, no. This this picture is uh is I mean this is very particular. So if you look at the if you look at the blue dots, there are seven in a row. And there are no white dots where there are seven in a row. Right? So if I do any rotation, it'll intersect itself. Yeah, so I didn't tell you that before, but it was true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry? Close to square root of n. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so, so um, right. So that, that's, this is really the key observation. So from there, it's kind of just a calculation. So we note that, um, that uh, the way I can, uh, another way to say this is that every automorphism um, has to send something in W to something else in W. Um, and so what we can do is we can just, for each automorphism, pick a pair uh, of things from W um, and, and make a map like that. And, and now we can, uh, okay, if we, if we write things this way, the, the, the important thing is the second summation. Um, if two automorphisms send uh, A to B, then, then they're both in the same coset of the stabilizer of A. Okay, so, so at most, the second summand can be the, the size of the, the stabilizer of A. Um, but in fact, uh, since this action is transitive, all the stabilizers are the same size. So I've, I've dropped the A notation there. Um, but then, uh, since we're summing over uh, pairs from W, then, then this gives us a bound on how big the, well, this gives us this inequality. Um, and then if we, uh, just rearrange, then we get that uh, that W has to be at least uh, square root the size of the number of voters. Um, yeah, so I think maybe one or two parts of that were were informative. Um, this is our sort of first technical contribution. Um, okay, um, so yeah, so the question is how tight is this lower bound? And, and the audience already told us that that, that rule um, gave us close to root n. Um, so, in fact, this, uh, yeah, this is clearly, it's just designed to be um, equitable, and, and this gives, you know, two root n plus two. It's, ba it's, basically, it's basically root n. Um, okay, so um, you can extend this, this notion of equitability, and you can ask for it to be uh, k-equitable, and this is just exactly, you know, pulling the notion of k-transitivity from group actions. So, um, so if for any... For any, yeah, sorry. Yeah, but you you need. Uh, I mean, you have to you have to pick two factors of n, and break it up that way. So if, if n is prime, for example, then you're not in great shape. Right. You you really need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, does that does that make yeah that makes, yeah, yeah okay yeah um, okay so so k equitability um, says says that for any for any k people we can map them to any other k people um, by by some automorphism um, so this is just saying that again that the, the automorphism group is k transitive um, and uh, and as an example um, uh, so so here's uh, here's something. That's too transitive. So you you take um, you take your favorite finite field and you look at the projective plane over that finite field, and you take the the set of lines um, to be the winning coalitions, um, and then any two of those have to intersect, um, and then uh, the, the the projective special linear group is is too transitive. Um, so there you get uh, that's like a lot of the too transitive uh, group actions that you can even get actually. So it's not this example is kind of like a lot of the examples, um, which which kind of gets to our next point. Um, so so we'll say that uh, we'll say that a pair um, number of voters and and k is an equitable May pair if if basically if May's theorem holds for that pair, um, where we ask for k k equitability instead of um, anonymity, um, and already for two trend or two equitability. Um, there aren't very many uh, um, n for which you can find any rule that's other than majority rule. 
uh, that's that's too equitable, and um, and then once once your k gets gets actually once your k gets to six, there's like nothing that you can do. You're you're back to May's theorem. Um, so there's something special that happens when you just ask for um, equitability. Um, if you ask for you know a little more equitability, being able to move groups of people around, um, then then things collapse. Um, so um, something I'm happy to talk about. No, so for two equitable, it's more like May's theorem. Yep, exactly. Yeah, the zero. Uh, if it had been a, if the zero had been a one, then then it would have been more like the other stuff that we said. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So so there's another um, uh, there's another kind of notion of of uh, sort of equitability that we've been playing with. That's that's we think pretty tightly tied, um, but but not obviously tightly tied to the notion that we introduced. Um, and I'd be happy to talk about that offline. That's that's pretty neat, actually. Um, and then we, we'd also like to uh, move, so, so basically replace a lot of instances of, of symmetric um, with with uh, having transitive automorphism group. Um, uh, so we, we've done some work on on looking at games that have uh, you know transitive automorphism groups also, not just voting rules. But that's it. Thank <laughs> you.